you are not a victim. You are not a victim to your circumstance. You're not a victim to your environment. You're not a victim to yourself unless you choose to be. I'm not saying some of our environments aren't difficult. I'm not saying life can't be challenging. I'm saying that you have a choice on how to approach life. What is your attitude towards life? How are you viewing life? Regardless of how hard or difficult it is and regardless of how unfair you think it is. How are you playing the cards you were dealt? Probably not as good as you could be, right? Right? I mean, there's always room for improvement. I know that's true for myself. And how can we improve? How can we grow? How can we evolve? If not for understanding that we have the power to, that we have the choice to, and that it's not just random. Personal transformation and growth and spiritual development isn't just random. It, it's not like, oh, it happens to some people and some people it just doesn't happen to. You know, some people are enlightened and some people aren't. It's just like there's no choice at all. No one has free will. Well, if you go down that path of no free will, sure, it's an interesting philosophical argument, but how are you actually going to live with that philosophical argument? Ah, you know, I don't have any free will, so I'm just going to, you know, sit on the couch all day because, you know, I have no free will, right? Not that there's anything wrong with sitting on the couch all day, you know, I've been there, but you see where that goes. You see where the, the victim, I don't have a choice. It's just happening, even within spiritual circles, the sort of idea that it's all unfolding, you know, it's all flowing, even that can have its shadow. Where you, as a life force energy in the world, where you stop trying, you stop caring, whether it's because life just beats you down, you know, naturally, and you feel like your soul is crushed from your you know, whatever, your your job that is a complete mismatch for your skills and abilities, or whether you go down some weird spiritual rabbit hole and you become nihilistic because nothing matters. You know, there's so many ways to, to get off track, really. And one of those ways is to tell yourself there is no track, there is no path. Now, in a sense, we can go there, right? In a sense, we can go there. There's no path. The moment is what is. And this is where your salvation lies. But I don't even want to go there because that's not really the point. The point is that you're not taking responsibility. And when I say you, I'm speaking to myself too. We get in this groove where we like feel like, ah, ah, you know, like we can't swim. It's just like, ah, it's, it's, I can't do anything about it. When it's like you can, and not only can you, but there's so many possibilities. There's so many options. There's so many available routes forward that you probably haven't tried and that's why it loops because you do the same thing over and over and over again, right? What's that famous quote? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. It's so true. It's so true and where does being a victim get you? And what does that mean being a victim? What that means is that you have a certain emotional, psychological disposition towards life which is uh, massively skeptical, overly skeptical, and ultimately um, uninterested and unengaged. It's a sort of like reserved, I've just given up attitude. And look, we all go through our stuff. Sometimes you get down. Sometimes you need to give up internally in order for something else to bloom. But as far as the recursive pattern of living as if you actually are a victim when really look around you look at how blessed you are i can guarantee you if you're watching a video on youtube you're blessed so just a shift in how we see in our attitude in our disposition changes everything and that's not oh no free will you can't control that no you can control that but you see as soon as you believe you can't then you have no power so what you're what you're believing, you're literally creating to be true in the moment. So if you believe you're a powerful creator and you're a spiritual being and you can manifest the life you want, and not only that, but past that, you can live an incredibly deep, profound life that is connected and 
flowing at one with the universe truly, if that's your disposition, then that's what will come to be, right? That's what will come to pass. But if your disposition is, all of this sucks, my life sucks, there's nothing I can do about it, it's just a grind, you know, what is, is just wit, is just is, and that's a spiritual truth, but how you're interpreting that spiritual truth is completely skewed and distorted by your nihilistic perspective, right? You see, your mind is filtering everything, so even with spirituality and spiritual truths, you can, you can understand truths, but how you're understanding them is completely opposite of what they were intended to show you, right? And this is why so many people that get into spirituality turn nihilistic. Because everyone's mind is wildly different and everyone's mind is interpreting, you know, all of these teachings and spiritual teachers and stuff like this, they're all interpreting it in different ways. And so part of the game we're playing here is I'm trying to cut through all that, basically. I'm trying to find ways to get past that, get to the real you underneath the surface, get to the true you that's behind that sort of static noise and haze you're living in most of your day, speak to that, speak to the true being you are, and hopefully, just hopefully, maybe a little seed sticks. And so that seed, if it sticks, can grow into, into a beautiful, massive tree, right? And one of those seeds what I'm trying to plant now is to seed this understanding that you're not a victim. You're not a victim. Like right now, look upon your life, look upon your life situation, kind of look at the story, look at how it's unfolded, and now acknowledge to yourself that there are no real boxes anywhere. Are there any boxes in your life? Are there any walls preventing you from discovering new possibilities, preventing you from discovering new paths, new ways forward, new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing life? Is there anything preventing you from doing that? No, not at all, right? It's just that maybe you didn't know you could do that. Maybe you were so steeped in this belief that you're a victim that you didn't even realize that there could be possibilities. But upon realizing that there could be possibilities, what do you start to see? Possibilities. So this is kind of weird, but the possibility of possibility is sort of the doorway into this creative energetic power that I would say all spiritually enlightened beings tapped into in one way or another. And that doorway can be through recognizing the possibility of your life, recognizing that you do have options regardless of circumstance. And I know that circumstances can be wildly different. I was just in Southeast Asia for six weeks and I saw how radically different people can live. But the same truth was strung along through all of that, which is that no matter where you are, no matter what time of the day it is, you always have a choice. And that is a fundamental quality of consciousness. If we want to think of consciousness like a jewel or a gem, one of the facets, one of the faces of the gem would be choice. Conscious choice. That's why living a conscious life is a life of choice. And the opposite of that, an unconscious life, is a life of autopilot. It's a life where you don't choose anything, where you're just being pulled by your emotions and, and reactivity, right? You're like an animal. You're like just running a program. That's unconsciousness. Consciousness is choice. Consciousness is living a life where you are choosing, not in a neurotic, overthinking type of way, but in a wise, harmonious way, you're choosing, and you're choosing more, and you're choosing with less resistance. So when I think of choice, that's what I think of. It's one of these core, core principles. It's one of these core facets. And almost it's like choice is like a, a, a key to living a, a truly connected life. Because like, just picture this. How could you live a spiritually connected life if you're not choosing that? Like, what you think it's just going to land in your lap? No. You'll get pulled into the, the gravity of the masses. You'll get pulled into the gravity of the herd. And if you haven't noticed, the herd isn't that conscious. The herd isn't operating at a, you know, highly developed level. 
So if you don't choose that, if you don't make that choice, then it can't come to pass. So make that choice and always remember you are the creator. Peace.